Um, hi, welcome to Jenny Show number 12. And here we are still in my apartment because my apartment's still a wreck and still needs a lot of work. We'd actually probably be going out and doing something cool, except number one, the, the girl who was supposed to do my makeover decided that she didn't want all of you guys like seeing her. She's a little camera shy, so no makeover. And um, number two, we'd also probably go out and do something cool, except I'm on a really tight schedule and I'm leaving to go to Massachusetts in like an hour and a half. So we don't really have time to like go out and get funky or anything. We have time for you guys to like watch me packing. So like you get to see what girls pack when they go on vacation, which might not be very thrilling, but we're going to do that and got a ton of questions this week. So thank you so much and keep them coming because like I know we haven't even scratched the surface. Okay. Oh, you off yeah. Purple? Also wanted to tell you guys, I got cool new furniture. It finally came because remember last time we were like sitting randomly like on the two pieces of furniture I had. So I have very cool purple furniture from, of all places, Jennifer Convertibles, which is, you know, funny. Haha. <laughs> and I got this awesome cool chair. It's actually called a chair and a half. It's got a twin bed inside of it and it's also big and purple and it's huge. It rocks. It's like just perfect so like I can scoot over and like my honey can like sit right there. And that we were kind of forced to snuggle rather than like me forcing him to snuggle. Like he doesn't have a choice and I can say it's not even my fault. So we're going to adjourn to the bedroom so that I can pack and, and spill my guts. Okay? Okay. We decided to make a short trip in the office. Since you guys only get to see the messy side of it, we're going to show you the cool side of it, which is also pretty messy because Joffrey's a total wreck. Anyway, uh, people have been asking constantly to see my computer setup, so I'm going to show you. Um, my two main computers are a Linux box right there, and you can see my email on it, in fact, so, so don't read that. And right beside it is my Macintosh, and that's the thing that I use to take the pictures, upload the pictures, surf the web, do pretty much everything because, hey, I love Macintosh. This is the actual camera. I got a new camera because I was really getting disappointed with the quality of the quick cam. So I moved the quick cam to the computer in the bedroom since that one won't take anything better than that and got a better computer for my new Macintosh, better camera, did I say computer, whatever, for my new Macintosh so that way the pictures are better and like lower file size and prettier and better light adjustment, all kinds of cool stuff like that. Love the camera. If you come over here, you'll see half of these computers are actually mine but I'm too afraid to touch them because Joffrey's got them like covered in stuff. So this is also my stuff. The next cube is Joffrey's. I want to get one of my own. I call her next cube. Should be here like in a month or so. Uh, got a whole bunch of random PCs with Windows and Linux and Windows and DOS and all kinds of crap installed onto them that I'm like too afraid to touch because I really don't like Windows. So hopefully we'll manage to get like Linux installed on all of them and then I can actually use them to do cool stuff. In the meantime, I, uh, I also installed a real PC on my Macintosh, and that's about as close to a PC as I want to get, is using Windows on my Mac, because Macs are smart. So, and no, I'm not getting paid to say this. So that's most of my computers. I'm still expecting to have like another two of them coming, and some of them are in the closet, and I have like two under the desk and stuff. I have way too many computers, okay? But all right, now we're actually really going to the bedroom because the sound in here sucks. Okay, so here we are. And I'm packing. So, and, like, and I'm just watching the packing. <laughs> yeah, Carla's sitting here, like, examining my pile of, like, smelly shoes and stuff. So I feel kind of bad about that. But, um, you know, we're going to ask questions and stuff. Just want to mention, like, I got this wicked cool new dress. I had it altered a little bit because it was, it was too big. But I got, like, this wicked cool new dress. And I'm going to a christening tomorrow. So this seems to me like a good christening dress. It makes me feel very, very kind of country club. So. And um, just, I just want to say, in case Tim Jezanowski is watching, and I'm sure he's not because he hasn't called me in, like, forever, but he's this guy that I know that used to insist that no redhead should be without a Laura Ashley dress. Just want to let him know that this is a Laura Ashley dress. I've got one, damn it. So now I am officially Tim Jezanowski approved. Mm -hmm. So I have to ask Jenny first about, like, a girl mystery that, like, Jenny just got a uh, Norplant. And I was asking all sorts of questions because I've never actually met someone that had one. Oh. So, so that's why it's so mysterious to me. And I wanted to, like, ask her, like, you know, like, how does it all work? And, like, it doesn't have any, like, side effects, right? Um, well, yeah, I just got more plants stuck in my arm. I have this, this lovely bruise. I don't know if you want to zoom in or anything, but it's 
it's kind of you got marks from where the band-aids were on so it's kind of sticky and stuff but um norplant is a five-year-long contraceptive so so no more pill no more sponges no more condoms yay like it's great and um the cool thing is that it's effective within 24 hours so like i didn't even have to wait and it works for five years so i'm definitely not having any kids from 26. you know of course like if suddenly when I was like 23, my, my biological clock started ticking over time, I could just have it taken out and have kids, but it's not going to happen. So um, it's actually like, I'm, I'm just saying this for Carla's benefit, like, I'm, <laughs> like this is going to make it seem like I'm being saved by like Macintosh and like Norplant and all kinds of companies. No, I, I really have never met someone that got yeah. it. But um, it's actually a progesterone only, so there's no estrogen involved, which means that it has lower side effects. and. Um, what it does for you guys who don't know how all these contraceptive things work is it releases progesterone into the body and it causes the <clears throat> uterus to automatically shed its lining so that way there is no place for the little fertilized ovum to implant so it just it just heads right on out so so that's how it works and it's actually more effective than having your tubes tied wow so Ooh. so i'm happy very happy and plus it costs like about half the price of what it would be to be on the pill for five years so I don't have to remember to take the damn thing every day. So for now, I have like a what? It, what it is is it's um it's six capsules stuck under the skin. Actually, if you feel, you can feel like little. Oh wow! You can feel them underneath the skin. You can't see them or anything. I'm probably gonna have like a little teensy weensy scar from the incision, but it doesn't hurt. It's just it's kind of cool. It's kind of neat. Ooh, I think I might stick to the pill for right now. <laughs> I know that like it would just probably have like really wacky effects on me. I don't well, know. The the one major side effect is that in almost all women, I love this side effect. They tend to stop getting their period. So I'm so excited about that. It's not a side effect. That's like a bonus. That's a selling point. A That's feature. a major selling point to this thing. So, so there we go. Ha ha. Wow. Well, there's another question I have to ask, and, and, and we're really not pushing any products or anything. <laughs> I needed to ask Jenny what she really thought about the whole Truman Show, because, like, you've gotten, like, so much Jenny Cam hype over the whole thing, and I wanted to, like, ask you if you really thought that there was any um, connection between your life and Truman's life, and, you know, if, if all the hype was justified or if you were just thought they were pulling that out of their asses. You know, the funny thing is that I actually felt that, like I had more in common with Kristoff, the director, because like I know the cameras are there. I'm not scared by the cameras. Nobody around me is pretending to be anybody, or at least, Jesus, I hope not. <laughs> but, um, you know, I really have nothing really in common with Truman except like the people who watch, like all the viewers are very similar to the people who watch Truman, you know. They said in the movie that people watch him sleep. I have lots of people write to me saying about how they watch me sleep. You know, things like that. So um, in that sense, I think the viewers are very similar. But I felt like I had way more in common with Kristoff because it was kind of his baby, and the Jenny Cam is my baby. Well, there are a couple of phrases in the movie that reminded me of, of things about you, like when the, uh, there were these two guys that were like, man, we never get to actually watch the mess sex. They always <laughs> turn the camera away. And, like we, we only see the curtains flutter. Exactly. Yeah, Joffrey's. It, it's all Joffrey's fault. So if you want to complain, you can write to Joffrey. His uh, his email ad address is um, gsg at netlimit dot com. Oh, that's so mean. You can write to Joffrey and complain that we don't do it on camera or anything. But um, he's actually getting better about it. I've had like a few times, like relatively recently, where he'll turn off like half the lights but not all of them or you know he'll turn the camera a little bit but not the whole way he's really getting better about it so i think i think we're kind of kind of like ease him on ease it on to him so there someone named midgame has a question saying you refer to yourself in the third person a lot are you really into yourself or is it some kind is it for the dramatic effect or is the we you and joffrey or who is we um, well, when I say we, I'm usually referring to me and the two guys who help me administer my site. Joffrey does a lot of the programming for the site, and my friend Spencer also does like a lot of the administration, the security, things like that. So when I say we, usually I mean like whoever does the technical stuff, which is them. So I'm trying to exclude them. When I talk about myself in the third person, I'm typically just doing it for kind of humorous effect, not because I'm into myself, and it's not for dramatic effect either. I'm not sure if you guys have realized this yet, but I do not take myself very seriously, and there's no reason for you to either. So if I refer to myself in the third person, it's just because I think it's funny, you know? I find it humorous to think that, 
you know, like, like the queen, like I'm the queen of the internet. Oh, it, it's really, it's not meant to be an ego thing or a drama thing. It's, it's just humorous. Just don't take yourself too seriously, really, because if you do, nobody else will. <laughs> Um, we, we have another one that's from an anonymous sender. It says, do you think that by posting messages like away on vacation, you change the basic nature of the Jenny cam? You know, in a sense, I wish I didn't have to do that, but essentially I'm doing it for more or less my own sake and somewhat for your sake because there are times when I'll go away for like three or four days. And if I don't put up a message like that, I get email from people, oh my God, where are you? And I get people accusing me that like, you ran off to France and you're moving to France and you're just going to steal all our money and run away with it, you know. I get the most ridiculous stuff. And I, when I'm away on vacation, like for instance, when I was at uh, Nassim Latin Resort, I ended up getting like 1,500 messages in the three days that I was gone. And that was with a message there explaining where I was. If I hadn't put that message up, it would have been at least three times that much mail. And I can't handle it. So while I wish I didn't have to do it, I think it's kind of a courtesy thing for myself and for you guys, so that way you don't worry about me or wonder or anything. Wow. Um, Pete in Florida wants to know, Jenny, have the Spice Girls asked you to become their fifth member? <laughs> you know, Joffrey and I were discussing this, like what would my name be? And Joffrey said I should be Horny Spice. But, um, but I want to be Smarty Spice. I want to wear the glasses and because I'm considerably taller than any of the Spice Girls. I'm 5'9", and I think the next tallest Spice Girl is like 5'5". Five five. So, like, they would have to wear those huge platforms they always do with me in, like, flats, and, and I hate wearing flats. So I would have to be, like, Smarty Spice, where I could wear, like, loafers and my glasses and have, like, you know, like a perky little ponytail like I do right now, you know, like, with, like, books flung over my shoulder or something. I could be Smarty Spice. But no, they haven't contacted me, and I, I don't see it happening because... I don't have the accent. Would you say yes? Would I say yes? Um, I would have to meet them. But, but frankly, I, I'm pretty sure I'd be pretty repulsed. <laughs> Not that I'm saying anything bad about the Spice Girls. I love the Spice Girls. <laughs> Unless you hate the Spice Girls, then I hate them too, okay? Like, I'm so tired of getting hate mail about what I say on my own damn show. Oh, my God. Someone was really pissed because we were cutting on the mom haircut. Yeah, this woman wrote in saying, like, gee, thanks, Jenny. I have the mom cut, and it looks really good. Thanks for the insult. I just want to say, whenever I say something about other people, it's a generalization. It doesn't apply to everybody. So, like, when I said the thing about bodybuilders, I meant most bodybuilders, not all of them. So if you're one of the bodybuilders who's not insecure or, you know, feeling inferior or whatever, you know, good for you. You're not one of the crowd. If you're somebody who can pull off the mom haircut, more power to you because it just means that you can take a bad haircut and make it work. That's great, okay? So if I say anything mean, I mean the other people, not you. And we hate people as individuals here on The Jenny Show. That's right. We don't hate groups. We, we, uh, we hate discriminately. Exactly. Exactly. Or the people who, like, wrote in complaining about Kate Winslet's breasts. Oh, God. Yeah, like, somebody wrote to me this week saying, what have you got against Kate Winslet? I just want to say, I don't have anything against Kate Winslet. She's a redhead like me. I think she's a babe. Like, if she were a lesbian and I were a lesbian, I'd want to get it on with Kate Winslet, you know? I think she rocks. I don't have anything against her. I was just repeating information that I had heard from two semi-reputable sources about her breasts. And I'm not saying one way or the other about the breasts. I don't even want to go into the frickin' breasts, okay? But I like Kate Winslet. I have nothing against her. Nothing, really, okay? And if you really like Kate Winslet so much, go check out her page and quit bugging me about it. <laughs> okay, this is a multiple-part question. Jenny. Is it possible for your partner to bring you to the brink of orgasm but without reaching full climax? Yes, but I hate it. Really. Like, if, if, if he does it once, like, I kind of, like, thrash around and scream. And if he does it, like, twice, I, like, start to, like, scratch. And if he does it, like, three times, then I just, like, flip out, really. Like, it's, it's not a good thing. <laughs> Some women apparently really like it, so you know you might want to try it with your girlfriend, like right when it looks like she's ready to have an orgasm, and then by now you should know, you know, just like slow down or like stop or like twist a little bit one way so that way she can't really like take over herself, you know, just like do something to like stop, and and she'll probably like flip out and rip out your eyeballs or something. But then when she later has an orgasm, she'll be very grateful and then probably won't talk to you for a week. So, 
<laughs> no, it's not a good thing. The guy that wrote the question wanted to know if if girls got something like blue balls if you didn't if you didn't let them come right away. No, girls do not get blue balls. Most notably, because girls do not have balls. <laughs> well, I guess he wanted to know if, if we felt the same kind of thing, but the, the I've physical never, pain. I've never felt anything no. exactly like that. No, it's just it's just like frustrating. But guys, because there's a blood flow thing, like it actually becomes painful. I, I actually had a boyfriend who got blue balls once, and um, no fun. Like he said, they hurt for like two days. Like after the blue balls went away, just like this, this like ache. So I, I don't envy you, your testicles, men. But but we no, just get we don't emotional get emotional anguish. Yeah, we just get emotional anguish and we get the period. So, you know, you can put up with freaking blue balls like twice in your life if we have to put up with our period once every month. So I have to ask, what is this thing? Oh, this is awesome. I love Aveda. They're like, ah, the one thing flipped open. Um, I go for like facials every now and then just because, you know, it's my way of treating myself. And, um, you know, everybody's always bitching about how ugly I am. So I'm, I'm like just trying to beautify the Jenny show. But um, it's it's like this cool little travel thing. It's got shampoo and conditioner and shower gel. It's got like little trial sizes of everything for like travel. Ah. And plus it's Aveda stuff, so that means it's vegan, which is really cool. Because Aveda stuff is all made like without the use of animal anything. Oh, and people were bitching about my cats. Like one guy was like, you you said your cat's name is Pistachio, but on the show you've called him Macadamia. I just want to clarify for everybody. I've got two cats, two of them. This is Macadamia. He's a little beige guy who likes to sleep on top of all my stuff. And the other one is the gray guy, and he's Pistachio, and he likes to jump on my head. <laughs> and here he is, here he is. We can't do this for long because Carla like, doesn't like my cat. No, well, she's allergic, she's allergic. But these are my two cats, okay? That's it. Pistachio also, this is really amazing. You're just gonna, You're just going to love this without any kind of prompting or any teaching or anything. Like, one night I was laying in bed reading and I heard the sound of somebody going to the bathroom. And I'm like, Joffrey, I thought you were in the living room. I peek over to the bathroom and I don't see anything. I keep leaning over, leaning over. And Pistachio was squatting on the potty, going, peeing on the potty, like by himself. He's done this like four times now. Oh my God. Just like actually going to the bathroom. Now I had heard that like, if you try really hard, you can teach cats to do that. I've seen books on that. Yeah, but like he just, all by himself, just started doing it. So every time he does it, I'm like, good kitty, good kitty. I like rub him and give him treats and stuff. You know, hopefully he'll keep doing it and like teach macadamia how, because that would be so nice. Okay, now you, have, now you have to put your feet out like this. Oh, okay. All the foot fetishists are going to either love this or hate this because of this condition I've got. So this guy Tom wants to know Jenny. Why are your feet always so dirty? And I don't really understand how he would know that your feet are dirty from the Jenny cam. Well, because like when I lay in bed, like I usually like throw one leg on top of the covers and the foot is like facing right towards the camera. <laughs> and it's like so, black. Yeah, I, I have dirty feet all the time because I love to go barefoot. I'm barefoot like all the time. I never put on shoes when I'm in my apartment. And um, while I vacuum and sweep and stuff like two or three times a week, you know, it's just, it's a relatively old apartment, so there's dirt like deep in the crevices of pretty much everything around here. So no matter what I do, there's dirt. And you know what? I shower often enough that I can just get the dirt off. It's just that I like to shower like in the evening, but not right before I go to bed. So usually like I get out of the tub, my feet are wet and I walk around and like they end up picking up all the dirt. And then I go to bed and then you see my feet on the camera and they're all like crusted with dirt from having walked around. You know what? You can just kiss my feet. Damn it, because they're dirty and I like them that way. I think it's kind of funny. <laughs> I actually have this picture of, of me. I should put it on the site. It's kind of, well, it's mildly provocative, but um, it's a picture of me like laying on my bed wearing like, you know, like a little white button down and like a pleated, plaid, plaid pleated skirt. And I have my hair in pigtails and I look like, you know, this perfect little schoolgirl. And then my feet are like filthy. And I think it's perfect. It's kind of this, it, uh, that sums me up. I'm kind of like, you know, sweet and cute and whatever, you know, not cute because I don't want to like sound like I have an ego. But, you know, it's like this sweet little picture with like dirty feet. <laughs> so that's me. Um, so 
Lee is going to base a personal decision on what you have to say. Oh, God. Lee says, Jenny, I'm uncircumcised. Do you think I should go ahead and get the operation? So it is kind of frightening that, like, people are, like, basing their decisions on, on what Jenny said. But go ahead. Um, I do not want to be responsible for, like, some man's <laughs> penis that I don't know. Um, Personally, and like if something really bad happens to your penis, like what's his name again? Lee. Lee, if something really bad happens to your penis, you cannot sue me for this because I'm, I'm saying right off the bat that I'm not a doctor and I'm just giving this, you know, like as a friend. Um, I would have it done because, you know, it's a relatively, well, it's, it's an outpatient procedure. You just snip, snip, and it's done. Um, I hear the healing time is really fast. Um, <clears throat> there's not much chances of infection since it's probably like something that cleans itself more or less in the shower, you know, because all the water goes there anyway. And um, actually, if you decided later that you wanted to have it back, there are actual procedures that you can go through to essentially get a new foreskin. So even if you hated yourself circumcised, you could get a new foreskin and it would be like you'd never had it done. So if it were me, I would do it. Yeah, I, I would definitely do it. I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I've, well, I've never seen an uncircumcised penis, so it's okay. Yeah, Joffrey actually got really mad at me because we were listening to the radio and it was like G. Gordon Liddy. And somebody called in asking, like, should I have my son circumcised or not? And he's like, go for it. And I, I casually, like, said to Joffrey that an uncircumcised penis is more likely to get infections. And he's like, yeah, well, only if you don't wash it. And I'm like, well, yeah, but I mean, percentage-wise, more likely. He got in this huge argument about it. I'm like, also, women tend to be kind of intimidated by it by uncircumcised penises. And he's like, well, I know a guy who's not circumcised and he has like no shortage of girlfriends. I'm like, in general, for Christ, like even Joffrey, even Joffrey berates me for making generalizations. So, I hate it. Uh, but me and Carla, like, I, I, I'm not afraid of uncircumcised penises, but, but I'm, always, I'm always kind of wary because, you know, I'm, uh, they just look so much more fragile, like I'm going to hurt something. So, so uncircumcised circumcised penises always look more, you know, stalwart, like, like more, whatever. They just look less damageable. Oh, and also, uncircumcised penises seem a lot more animal-like, which I'm sure is appealing to some people. But like, I don't know. I mean, it's, I guess, it's whatever floats your boat. That's true. That's true. But me and Carla, not all women, because we don't know all women. But me and Carla prefer circumcised penises. And we don't have a lot of female friends, so I guess we don't really. <laughs> that's right, that's right. For all we know, we could be the only two women in the world. Because so don't between, write to us and bitch us. Between the two of us, we probably have about that many female friends. <laughs> yeah. So Adrian in Mexico wants to know, Jenny, would you like to be my friend? Oh, that was kind of sweet. I'd like to be your friend. In fact, you're, you're welcome to, to, come, to come visit me. I've, I've, I have beer waiting for you, okay? So, so come on up. Oh. Now this this one was slightly frightening from someone named Dwok in Finland. He says, Jenny Kim, my mistress, I worship you, my queen of lonely nights. I have made a full-size statue of you. It stands on my bed next to me and comforts me when I cry. Every night I pray to the statue to become alive so I could show you my collection of 5,000 used yellow pencils. Yours forever, Jacques from Finland. <laughs> Jacques, is there any way that you could like send us a picture of the statue? I'd really like to well, see it. Well, I want to see a picture of the statue, and also, if you really want to, you could send me a picture of all the yellow pencils. You know, that way I would actually see them. So we're like we're dying for you to send us pictures of this Jacques from Finland. Please, please send us pictures. That's. Probably the coolest letter I got since last. That is <laughs> super cool. That is super cool. Like that's, you could like make like a big it's like poster a, of that. It's like a Ginocchio. <laughs> he keeps praying for it to become alive. Claudio wants to know, Jenny, are any of the sexual stereotypes from men of de different ethnicities true? And you know, I find it funny that Claudio, also who was writing to me, is um, is Portuguese. Ah. So so I think he's. I I, I frankly I've never heard anything about Portuguese men. I knew a Portuguese guy in college, like he was one of my best friends. So if Greg Capello is watching, like hi, or if anybody who knows him, like, say hi to Greg. But um, <clears throat> uh, I don't know anything about Portuguese guys. Um, 
I dated a guy who was half black for like a year and a half, and he and I were engaged, and um, he he had a, a really huge penis. And I don't know if, if that's like the half black or the half white, I don't know, but um, haven't seen a lot of black penises, just just the half of one, and it was, if that's half of the size of a black penis, let me just say I'm scared, and I'm only dating white guys from now on, because it's too much. But but not all black guys, okay? So I'm not putting down black men by any means. So was that the only time you were engaged? I was also engaged to Chris Sargent, um, the, the guy that I dated in college. Um, but not officially, although um, I, I just reinstalled this uh, calendar program on my computer, and I opened it up and realized that um, I still had the date set for like last like last month in May for us to get married it was supposed to be our wedding day. And I'm like, ah! So I had like this huge kind of like coming to terms with the idea that I would be married right now. Wow. So it made me realize that like not a chance in hell. Do you still talk to him? Um, I don't talk to Tim, the, the biracial guy that I dated in college anymore, even though he's like a real sweetheart um, because he kind of like stopped calling me. Um, which is okay because I was really kind of rude to him like when I broke up. It was kind of mean. But um, Chris Sargent and I still talk. Like we're actually, we actually get along better now that we broke up. So it's very cool. He made a great friend. Wow. And I'm trying to like get him to sell me his Porsche. So. The funniest thing was when, I, when we were in college, when I was dating him in college, he was like broke all the time. Like he always had to write to his dad to like bail him out of his bills. Like all the time he was broke. And then, like, as soon as we broke up, he got a really good job paying, like, you know, high double figures, you know, like, almost 100000 a year. He's got a Porsche, like, you know, now all of a sudden he's got money coming out of his ears. I'm like, why? <laughs> so, uh, Pistachio's, like, trying to suck up all the camera time here. Well, I've never been engaged, but I always get frightened whenever, like, people younger than me are married. Um, I ran into a friend yeah. from college last night at the movies. He's like, hi, Carla, this, let me introduce you to my wife. Ah. I'm like, whoa, this is scary. People are getting old. Yeah. Like, people are, like, becoming part of my parents' generation. <laughs> people, like, are buying houses in the suburbs. I mean, not that mm. there's anything wrong with that, but <laughs> it's frightening to me because I'm not ready to do that. We should have this little, like, ticker thing going on the bottom of the screen all the time. It says not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> you say, like, you know, black men's penises are too big. Not that there's anything wrong with that. That way we're, like, disclaimed. Exactly, time. exactly. <laughs> Although, you know, we should probably be proud of, you know, saying what we hate, what we don't. Yeah, yeah, and I hate people who write to me to bitch. <laughs> That's what I hate. Um, Mike T wants to know, who or what did you want to be when you were a child? What, like, what did you want to be when you grew up, and how has that changed? I actually have this really funny baby book. It, it, it had one for, like, every year you were in school. And, like, when I was in first grade, I checked off that I wanted to be, like, a doctor and a mom. And then the next year I said I wanted to be a doctor and a mom and a teacher and a model. And then the next year I would be a doctor, a mom, a teacher, a model, and a singer and an actress. And by the time I got to sixth grade, I had like everything checked off, including like cowboy and astronaut. So I was a very ambitious child, and, and I still kind of am. I could see myself being like almost anything. I don't have any particular leanings one way or the other. Um, I know for a while I definitely wanted to be a lawyer because my parents told me lawyers made lots of money. And I knew that I wanted to be a Republican when I grew up because um, Michael Keaton from, from Family Ties was a Republican. <laughs> and he was smart like me, so I, I had to be a Republican too. <laughs> and um, then my parents told me that lawyers just spent all of their time suing each other, so I don't want to be a lawyer anymore. So then I wanted to be a diplomat. And then I got to college and realized that diplomats had to take history classes. So I didn't want to be a diplomat anymore. <laughs> so now I just want to be, um, I want to be a kept wife. That's my dream. <laughs> Marry like some sugar daddy who will like spend all of his money on you so I can just stay home all day and like swim and, you know, be cute when he gets home. Ooh, that's, that's a bad scene. <laughs> that's a bad, bad Well, I know, because eventually like he'd need a newer model and he'd dump me and, and I'd have no skills other than like I can swim and look cute all day. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm like mostly done packing. I pack really light and I'm hoping to like get the hell back home as soon as possible because this apartment really needs a lot of work. Well, where are you so, going? I'm going to Massachusetts uh, for the christening of my friend's new baby girl, Autumn Eve. 
Autumn Eve. Autumn Eve. Wow. Yeah. So I have like my little toiletry bag that has toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant, and shampoo and stuff like that. Uh, a pair of blue jeans that are actually kind of dirty, but you know, blue jeans only get better the dirtier they get. Um, stick into that. I got a little tank top from, from Frederick's. Very cool. They make great tank tops. They make kind of lousy everything else, but they make pretty cool. Actually, the dress I'm wearing is from Frederick's too. And it's like not totally cheesy. It's only semi-cheesy. Uh, a little Winnie the Pooh tank top that I got from a friend. This rocks. It's actually, um, she's, a, she's a fan and she's a friend of mine from IRC. And her name is Jody. So if Jody's watching, you want to say hi. And thank you for the great little tank top. She sent it to me. It's got Winnie the Pooh on the front. It's a cool color. Yeah, I think it's great. Because most of the Winnie the Pooh stuff is like in pink and baby blue and stuff. And it's kind of wussy. Uh, just a little tank top. Just, it's, it's peach. It's, it's the color my mother always says. It's my color. In fact, I think I was wearing it last Jenny show. Yeah, I think you look good in peach show. Uh, bras and panties and stuff. Because I always, I always forget to pack bras and panties. I do. Like, I always have like 15 different kinds of, you know, toothpaste and 20 different pairs of shoes. I remember everything. And then I get there and I'm like, no underwear. So rather than, of course, wearing the same pair of underwear for a week, you know, I just go without. But, like, even that, you know, I'm going to tell you guys, like, a big secret. For women, if you're wearing pants especially, not wearing underwear is not a sexy thing. Because, like, you know how if you wear, like, a knit shirt, you get, like, little, like, your armpits will turn black if it's a black top. Or, you know, you get, like, little fuzz balls. Like, that happens if women don't wear panties and they wear jeans. Well, and also there's a seam right on the crotch which can rub up against you and be extremely uncomfortable. Yeah, so women not wearing panties in like dresses is, is kind of like okay, but women not wearing panties with pants is gross. Just want to let you know that. Jenny! Who's that? Jenny, I am your creator. Jenny, there is no more truth in Massachusetts than there is in Washington, D.C. I'm going. <laughs>